does excess fat actually cause a fatty liver? Now, you might be expecting this video to be talking about how that's not the case and how excess carbohydrates are really the cause for a fatty liver. One of the things that I have to get out in the open is that the world of a fatty liver is pretty complicated. There's a level of bioindividuality with it. There's really just the common theme that excess nutrient intake in general could definitely lead to a fatty liver. But one of the things that I want to point out that is very, very interesting is that 90% of obese type 2 diabetics have a fatty liver. That might tell us something interesting. Let's dive in. Hey, today's video is brought to us by Organifi. If you want to check out their cool red juice powder, this stuff is awesome. So if you're looking for a way to get like, nice antioxidant berry blends in, they have 13 different superfoods that are in it. Really awesome, made from a whole food beet powder. So you're getting that nitric oxide effect but also adaptogens. So we're talking cordyceps that can help with ATP production. It has reishi, which is an adaptogenic mushroom to help you feel more calm and relaxed. Really well formulated red juice powder. So if you're doing lower carb or maybe you're intermittent fasting and you wanna just make sure you're getting enough nutrients in and you're trying to get the antioxidants from berries and things like that, might be the way to go. Plus, you can save 20% off when you use that link down below. So I've known Drew Cannoli who started Organifi for I guess I've known him for like seven, eight years now. I've known him for a long time. He's always put his best foot forward. So any brand that you see on this channel is either a brand that I use personally or a brand where I really do know the people that run it. So I know it's a good product and I use it personally. So that link down below will save you 20% off whatever you choose to get. So whether you decide to get their red juice powder, their green juice powder, or their gold, which is really awesome, or their chocolate gold, which I'm a big fan of as well, you'll save 20% off. So use code THOMAS2022, and that link is there, Organifi.com slash Thomas2022. That red juice powder seriously is my favorite. It is my jam, so make sure you check it out down below. So when you think about obese type two diabetics, having a higher instance of fatty liver, it makes you think, okay, it definitely has to do with carbohydrates then because they're insulin resistant, so the excess glucose is causing an issue. Well, have you ever actually tried to think of flipping the script? Because when cells are insulin resistant, they're also resistant to fat too. Well, mainly like a fat cell becomes insulin resistant. Now, what does that really mean? Well, when we look at what is called lipotoxicity, like excess fats that are circulating, well, this is an issue where basically the body is sensing so much extra fat that it starts kind of shutting things down. It creates so much inflammation that processes get disrupted. Now, one of the biggest issues that we face is when we become insulin resistant, the carbohydrates are a problem, but a possibly even bigger problem is the fat. Okay, so our adipose tissue is fat cells, right? And our fat cells can only hold so much fat. So if we have a fat cell and we overeat fat, well, that fat is gonna try to get into the fat cell, but it can't. So what ends up happening is this fat cell expands and kind of spills out. And when it spills out, it creates hypoxia. It creates a hypoxic situation, which means it's like starved of oxygen because basically this cell just can't hold any more fat. It's pretty complicated chemistry that's going on there. Well, this hypoxic environment allows for what is called HIF-1. It's a specific gene. Okay, this activation of this gene then ends up causing an inflammatory response. So when you have this inflammatory situation, it can be a problem because inflammation, when it ultimately gets up to the brain, that's going to inhibit the hypothalamus from receiving the proper hunger signals. So then we're tempted to eat more when we shouldn't eat more. And that's not good for our waistline, but ultimately even worse than that is it's disrupting this whole energy balance. Okay, it's the job of our brain to recognize that we have X amount of energy coming in. So we need to make sure we limit our intake so we don't have too much. Well, okay, that's kind of beside the point. The big piece when it comes down to the liver, what happens is those fat cells, they become insulin resistant because there's so much inflammation. So when the fat cells are insulin resistant, it stops the anti-lipolytic effect of insulin on that cell. What does that mean? So normally in a healthy individual, a fat cell is going to, when it gets affected by insulin, 
it stops the leaking of fat into the bloodstream. Okay, so insulin stops fat from leaving the cell and going into the bloodstream. It's anti-lipolytic. It's not good for fat loss, but it's still an important piece, right? But if that fat cell is insulin resistant, okay, if that fat cell is insulin resistant, then that means insulin's ability to stop fat from leaking out of it is inhibited. So guess what happens? You have this inflammatory fat cell that is now leaking extra fatty acids into the bloodstream that are not being requested for energy. Now, fats going into the bloodstream when there's a demand for them is great. Fats going into the bloodstream because someone left the backyard fence open is a different situation. When that gate is open and the fats are just going into the bloodstream willy-nilly, that's a problem. Because now you have fat cells that are circulating and guess where they're going? They go to the liver, okay? And the liver cannot handle that extra fat. It doesn't have the ability to deal with the extra fat that is coming from essentially the insulin resistant adipose tissue. Now, what does this have to do with consumption of saturated fat? Well, saturated fat can do the same kind of thing. We can only handle so much at a given point in time. So when we start eating more than like 20, 30, 40% of our daily fat calories from saturated fat, over time, this leads to this lipotoxicity. And the fat that circulates through the bloodstream and goes to the liver, the liver really likes to hold on to that fat. And guess what? It's easy to store it because it's already in its fat form. Does this mean that excess glucose and excess carbohydrates don't cause a fatty liver? No, that's not the case at all. What I'm saying here is that both are culprits. And when you look at observational data, you see most of the time people that develop a fatty liver are, guess what? Eating high amounts of saturated fat and high amounts of carbohydrates. We don't have a lot of observational data to look at, say, someone that's been doing a lower carb ketogenic diet for 20 years to say with certainty that only saturated fat is the problem. We don't have people that have only been consuming pixie sticks and eating pure sugar for the last 20 years to say that only excess glucose is the problem. What we do know is that people that are eating both have a huge problem. And when we start looking at the data from like type two diabetics and we see, hmm, they're insulin resistant, so that means that their fat tissue is probably insulin resistant. So that means they're leaking more fat into the bloodstream and that fat is gonna go into the bloodstream and circulate and store in the liver. One of the first side effects or first consequences of the liver becoming insulin resistant is developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So as you start to have other situations happening where you, the liver is getting insulin resistant, the muscle is getting insulin resistant, all kinds of things, well then it starts wanting to store fat that is in circulation more. In fact, some studies have indicated that the liver likes to store fat from fat more so than it does via de novo lipogenesis, which is the creation of fat from glucose. What does all this mean in a very simple way? When you consume a lot of carbohydrates, those carbohydrates have to get repackaged up and it's a long process with fatty acid synthase and like seven subsequent steps to convert that into fat. It does not mean it doesn't happen. It happens all the darn time because we eat a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of times I think we eat way too much of them. So yes, the research shows that you can probably store fat pretty easily from glucose, excess carbohydrates, but it also shows that it might even be easier from excess saturated fat. The operative words here, excess, moderation is key. The interesting thing is when you start looking at the data, simply being in a caloric deficit or periods of intermittent fasting can quickly start to flip this on its head. Okay, so what you do need to do is modulate your saturated fat intake, modulate your sugar intake, and make sure you're eating less than you're consuming. It sounds like the most basic thing in the world because it kind of is, but that also feels like it's discrediting people that really are working hard and trying hard, right? Well, once you're insulin resistant, it is difficult because it's a big long thing that you have to unravel. So simply being in a deficit doesn't solve all the problems, right? That's why we have to look at all these different bricks in the wall and like why on this channel I talk about all kinds of different facets of metabolic optimization and mitochondrial health and all these things. So it's not to say that just being in a deficit is going to solve the problem, but you do need to look at the big picture if you're concerned with a fatty liver. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.